Jeez. Factoring review. This video will help you develop an overall factoring strategy. Now let's take a look at this overall factoring strategy. Once we check for a greatest common factor, which is what we always do first, we look then for the number of terms in the polynomial that we're going to factor to clue us in into the factoring technique needed. So here's kind of some bullet points. First thing we check, is there a greatest common factor? And just as a little review here, I've given us a binomial. Here, 3x squared plus 9x. And notice here there is a greatest common factor. If we look at the numbers there or the coefficients, we have a 3 and a 9. Well, the greatest common factor of 3 and 9 is, th is 3. Now let's look at our variables. We have an x squared and an x. Well, they both contain a factor of x. Therefore, our greatest common factor is 3x. And so we can kind of factor that out front. When we divide it out of 3x squared, we'll have an x left. And when we divide it out of 9x, we'll have a 3x. Sorry, we'll have a 3 left. So we always check to see if there's a greatest common factor. Once we get done checking to see if there's a greatest common factor, now the number of terms kind of guide our factoring. And so if we have two terms, we check to see if we have a difference of squares. And so a difference of squares means we have a difference, meaning a subtraction symbol. And this only works if there's subtraction. And then our two terms are perfect squares. Notice here, x squared, I can get that as, I can get that by multiplying x times x. So that's a perfect square. And 16 is also a perfect square. I can get that by multiplying 4 times 4. So here I have a difference of squares, and that always factors into x plus one of the factors, x minus one of the factors here. So you see I have x plus 4, and then x minus 4 for that difference of squares. If we have three terms now, we try to factor kind of the traditional factoring of, of a trinomial into two binomials. And so here's a trinomial. You know, and usually these are organized some variable squared, then some variable just by itself, and then the last term is just a constant term. And so this 2x squared plus 9x minus 5, this will factor into two binomials, 2x minus 1 and x plus 5. Final case here is if we have four terms. Four terms we always try to factor by grouping. So we would look at these four terms, and all together here we would say, well, let's first start to see if there is a common factor in all four terms. And we look at all four terms. It looks like the first three terms we could factor an x out. That's about it, though. Since it doesn't come out of that fourth term, that's not a common factor. So once we look and see there's no greatest common factor here, then we kind of pair these things up. And let's just pair here for these first two terms together and look at those two terms. Is there a greatest common factor in those two terms? Yes, in fact, x is the greatest common factor. So we go ahead and factor that out. And that's what I have written right here. This is that first pair there with an x factored out front. Now let's look at this next pair of, of terms here. And let's see if there's a, a common factor or greatest common factor in those two terms. And there is. It's y. So if I factor that y out front, here's what I get, y times x plus 7. Now take a look at these two terms. Now we've kind of, once we've factored these things out front, now we're down to two terms here. Notice they both share a common factor of x plus 7. So what we're going to do now is factor that x plus 7 out front. And that's what I've done here. I'm going to kind of factor that x plus 7 out front. When I factor it out of my first term, x is left. And so that's why you see that here. When I factor it out of my second term, y is left. And so that's why you see I have that there. That's the way we factor by grouping. And we do that when we have four terms. Now let's go ahead and practice this overall factoring strategy. So I've given you a practice problem here, 2x squared minus 8, ask you to factor it. I've also given you some bullets here to kind of guide you or help you with this overall factoring strategy. So go ahead and pause your video player now and work this practice problem. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Okay, so I have two terms here, but before I go to this difference of squares, I want to first check to see if there is a greatest common factor in, in these two terms, and there is. If I look, 2 is a common factor of both 2 and 8. I can't do anything with the x's, but I can factor a 2 out of there. So the very first thing I do is I would factor a 2 out front. And when I do that, 2 out of that first term would leave me with x squared. And then 2 out of 8 would leave me with 4. So here's what I get when I factor that 2 out front. Now I have two terms in here. And anytime we have two terms, we've got to check to see if it's a difference of squares. Well, I see the subtraction symbol. 
So now that really clues me in that I got to check to see if this is a difference of squares because I have a difference. Now I just need to check and see if I have perfect squares. The first one, yeah, x times x gives me x squared. Second one, well, 2 times 2 gives me 4, so this is a difference of squares. So I'm going to go ahead now, I'm writing that 2 out front so I don't forget about it. I'm going to factor this x squared minus 4 into a difference of squares. So I need x and x. I know that I need a positive and a negative. And the square root of 4 is 2, so that's my perfect square there is 2. So there is the factoring. Now let's double check this difference of squares just to see how this happens here. Um, here's my answer. But I'm just going to multiply this these two binomials together so you can see that we do in fact get this x squared minus 4. So I would distribute the x first and so I get x squared and then minus 2x and now I'm going to distribute the positive 2 so that's going to give me plus 2x minus 4 and you can see that middle term is dropping out because I have a minus 2x and a plus 2x which gives me 0 so you can see how that's the correct factoring of x squared minus 4, this x plus 2, x minus 2. All right, go ahead and pause your video player again and factor this practice problem 2 here. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. All right, problem 2. Mm, I have a very big polynomial here. It has four terms. So I'm kind of thinking factoring by grouping. But before I do that, I've got to check to see if there's a greatest common factor. Well, y works in the first one, x works in the first and the third. Yeah, there's not a really a greatest common factor here, so there's nothing to factor out there. So we're going to go straight to this factoring by grouping. So I'm going to look first at this first pair, y, x squared minus 4y, and see if there's a common factor there. And there is. Uh, the common factor there is y. So I'm going to go ahead and factor that y out front. Let's see, when I factor that y out front, I'd have x squared minus 4. So that's the first pair of terms there. Now let's look at the second pair of terms. 3x squared minus 12. Well, both of those terms, 3 is a common factor, and so I'm going to factor a positive 3 out, so I'll write a plus 3 here. And let's see what happens when I factor that 3 out. So when I factor the 3 out of the first term, I'm going to have an x squared left. And when I factor a 3 out of that second term, I would have a negative or minus 4 left. Now, the only way factoring by grouping works is if once we factor these, these terms out, these two binomials match, and they do. See, they're both x squared minus 4. And now, since they're both x squared minus 4, I can factor that x squared minus 4 out front. So they both share this common factor of x squared minus 4. When I factor it out of the first term, I'll have a y left over. And when I factor it out of the second term, I'll have a plus 3 left over. And so, there it is, that, that four-term polynomial there now is factored by grouping. Here's our answer. Here's our factored form of that. All right, go ahead and pause your video player and now try practice problem three. All right, problem three, we're asked to factor this trinomial, which tells us we have three terms. But before we go to this three terms, we want to check to see, of course, is there a greatest common factor? We always check this first. And so let's look at our terms here. It doesn't look like there's an x common factor, but if you look at the coefficients here, 6, 18, and 12, the greatest common factor of those three numbers is 6. So I can factor a 6 out front here. You know, you may have factored a 2 or you may have factored the 3 out. And while those are common factors, those are not the greatest common factor. We always want to factor out as much as possible. And here that's going to be a 6. So let's see, after I factor that 6 out of there, I'd have uh, x squared plus 3x plus 2. And now once I get that 6 out front, you can see I now have a trinomial. But the trinomial has a lot easier numbers to work with than the ones I started. So now I'm thinking right here, three terms. I'm going to factor this trinomial right here into two binomials. Now it's really easy to forget to bring down that 6, so always bring this 6 down first before you think about factoring, or else you may forget about it and not get the correct factoring then in the end. Well now if we're looking at this x squared plus 3x plus 2, well, okay, I need an x and an x. Everything is positive in there, so I know my signs need to be plus plus. And factors of 2, there really are only, you know, one factorization of 2, 2 times 1. So let's hope this works, 2 and 1. 
And sure enough, if we look at outsides here, that's going to give us 1x plus insides, which is 2x. So 1x plus 2x does give us 3x for the middle term. So this is the correct factoring then of that trinomial. All right, let's take a look at this final practice problem here. Uh, go ahead and factor this and then hit play to see how you did. All right, practice problem five, we're asked to factor this x squared, or sorry, x to the fourth minus 16. There's no greatest common factor there. There's two terms, so we're thinking difference of squares. Sure enough, there's a minus sign there. So that really makes us think difference of squares. And x to the fourth, that's x squared times x squared. 16 is four times four. So this will factor as a difference of squares. So let's see if we started with x to the fourth minus 16. That is gonna factor as x squared plus four, x squared minus four. And if you got right to here, that's pretty good. But we still need to check to see if we can factor these binomials that we have now. And you'll notice this one here, we have a minus sign, which should make us think, well, could this be a difference of squares? And sure enough, it is. x squared, that's x times x, and 4 is 2 times 2. So we can factor this last binomial one more time. So we're going to get x squared plus 4. And then here, we're going to have x plus 2 x minus 2. We would want to check here since we have a difference or a minus sign to see maybe could we factor this as a difference of squares again and we can't here because x there's nothing times itself that's going to give us x cleanly and 2 that's prime as well. So here is a final factored form of x to the fourth minus 16.